Each year, thousands of HVAC technicians find themselves on roofs, in attics, and under homes tasked with troubleshooting equipment they have no clue how to work on. Don't be that guy. Watch this video in its entirety and we will walk you through the basics of troubleshooting low voltage issues. If people like this type of content, leave positive feedback and we'll make more. Whenever you're troubleshooting an HVAC system, your voltmeter is your best friend. We're not gonna be going over how to troubleshoot mini splits today. This is gonna be like 24 volt systems. We can make another video on how to troubleshoot mini splits. Those aren't really all that hard to troubleshoot either, but it's, it's a very different kind of process that you go through. When you come up on a system that's having an issue, I will say you do not want to kill power to it. So the if you kill power to your system, that will kind of reset everything. If you have a bad board or if your system is in some kind of lockout, you're not going to know any of that. So you'll be, you'll be going in completely blind. So if you come and look in here, we have two boards in here. Either of these could be failed or they could be in a lockout. I don't think these ones actually have a lockout, but they're uh, different systems. All different systems have all different things. If you shut your system off, then you're not any info that you can get from that system you're not gonna have anymore on pretty much any system that's not a either mini split or communicating system you're just pretty much looking for 24 volts we do have power at this unit and then i mean we also want to check that we have power coming from our transformer so we do have power here and we've got 27 volts there. That's what we want. Very, very common mistake in HVAC systems is that these transformers are not wired properly. You see, this one has three plugs. Lots of time they'll have two. And all you have to do is look at the voltage and put this plug on the correct location. But that's, that's a step that's missed a lot. If we don't understand kind of how this system is told to turn on, we're not gonna be able to understand how to actually troubleshoot things. So this contactor right here, this is off, yeah. This contactor right here, it needs 24 volts to turn on, okay? That's gonna be our main thing in this system. We've got relays and stuff. This is gonna be our fan relay down here, but this thing needs its 24 volts. So if your system is not turning on, usually your contactor is not gonna be pulling in. Essentially, you've got two sides of your power, hot and common. Those both have power, but if they touch each other, then you're gonna blow blow up your board, you're gonna blow a fuse, you're gonna start messing things up. So these two right here, this has 27 volts, these two should have 27 volts. So in this system, red is hot, brown is common, green, our green wire from our system is gonna be fan, yellow is our compressor, and orange is reversing valve. That's like pretty consistent, but you're always gonna want to look at your wiring diagram. So there's our wiring diagram. And so you're gonna wanna to refer to that and here's our low voltage stuff right here. So it tells you exactly what colors do what. And if you don't know how to read a wiring diagram, like if you don't know the basics of it, if you don't really want to take the time to do it, then this just calling someone who does. So once we have verified that we have power going to the thermostat, out of the transformer, and then we can check power at the thermostat here. So we can check we have 24 volts here. The way the thermostat works is it just kind of divvies up your power. And so you have your thermostat power wire right here. And then when you turn your thermostat on, all that it's gonna do is it's gonna send this power to whatever other wire and then make both sides of that hot. So that's how this thing gets power. I don't know if I'm making a ton of sense. Am I making a ton? Am I making, making sense? sense? Okay, cool. You get both sides of your power coming here and it creates a magnetic field that sucks in this contactor. So you need both sides of power to this contactor. You've got your common wire and I will kind of show you when you are trying to figure out where you have power to, the easiest way to do that, plant your one side of your voltmeter onto your common side, take your other your other lead and just start poking around. So if there, there's gonna be a spot where you lose power, okay? So whether that's a pressure switch like over there or whether that's your board, you're gonna be poking around and you're gonna find a loss of power. I wish this system was a little bit better to show it on. This system is a little bit more, I would say involved. And actually, this unit isn't working right now. It's got an issue. And so this will be a good, good little example. So this is our thermostat wire right here, okay? And you kind of want to get your bearings about you when you show up to troubleshoot a system like this. You look around and I mean, you don't, like I said, you don't kill power and you try and figure out, hey, like what, is going on at first glance. Lots of times you can know, tell exactly what a system is doing without even putting your voltmeter on it, without checking pressures, without anything. You can just kind of like 
take it all in and say, hey, like, look, this system is doing this. But that's not always the case. So on this one, these wires go to our thermostat. This is hot and common to our thermostat because we can see if we have power going to our thermostat first. So be careful not to touch these wires to anything else. And then we take our voltmeter and we check and see if we've got 27 volts right there. Uh, this is off. So we don't have 27 volts there. So our issue is before the thermostat. Now we trace backwards. So our hot wire goes back in here. It goes way back into here. It's just a hot mess when, when you got a system like this. And so you wanna be a little bit careful because some of these could be live high voltage wires. And so careful not to touch anything that's gonna be hot, but- I'm to be careful for loose copper coming out here too. Some people don't trim them good. Yep. And you'll get zapped just yep. by picking it up. So we start kind of pulling everything out a little bit. And ideally, if, if you restart the system at this point, sometimes it will reset and you will not know what is going on because it'll just start working and then you're gonna come back the next day because it breaks again. We do have power coming into our system, okay? Line one, line two, line three. So you wanna check here, 208, 208, 208. Between all three legs, we have three phase power here. All three legs are hot. Our transformer then, needs power going to it. So where do our transformer wires feed from? One wire coming from this side of our trans of our contactor on the hot side that's hot at all times. And then on this one, it's coming from the other side of our hot on our contactor. And it's cut off here by a relay that is normally closed. When we say close, close means it has a connection. Open means there's opens. Open means there's no connection. So closed, open. If this relay gets energized, then it opens and so this relay right here we can see 27 volts so now we figured out hey our transformer does not have power you, you saw how we did deduce that we found where we were missing power and then we backtracked and we said hey where are we losing our power and our we were losing our power actually at the hot side of, or at the high voltage side of our transformer so in this case, we have a temporary fix that's been temporary for like a month right now. We need to get approval from the building to come back and do a permanent fix here, but we have to have this system running because of the type of facility it is. So in the meantime, we've got a temporary fix on here. Reason, that same reasoning applies, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a relay or a high pressure switch. These, if, if you know that you're having a loss of low voltage through your system what you can do is you can just go to your comm inside and put your little probe on here and then you can just go and poke around and say hey where am i losing power and just start poking and saying i have 27 here 27 here 27 here 27 here and then wherever you don't have power you know that that's going to be your issue you can use your continuity thing as well and usually i like to set this on the one where it makes a noise. So this is our high pressure switch. Here's our low pressure switch. The purpose of these two wires, it goes right here, you see it's the same wire. The purpose of these two wires is just to allow power to flow through it. If this switch, it, the, the two things that can go wrong with this switch are either the switch stops working or the switch is sensing that there's a problem with the system. So all there, there's nothing complicated about these things. All you should do, all, all it should have is continuity. And so when you touch, you set your voltmeter to continuity, when you touch these two wires, you should hear that beep right there. There should be almost no resistance between it. And then the same thing, this is another pressure switch, same concept. So this is what most switches in your system are gonna be. So boom. And so that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a loss of continuity, a loss of power. And once you find that, in most cases, you're gonna be able to find your issue and that's gonna be everything that, the whole, the whole problem. That's like basic troubleshooting. That's basic HVAC troubleshooting. There's not a lot to it. If you have a good voltmeter, and by good voltmeter, I mean something that can do AC voltage, AC power con and continuity. In most cases, you can figure out where you're losing issue, having problems with your system. Amp draw obviously is important. MFD is good. This is like for testing capacitors. But if you're having an issue where the system is not starting, then using your uh, voltage and using your continuity, you're gonna be able to figure out where you're losing your power and why it's not actually starting. Okay, yeah, one more thing. So control boards. 
control boards are misdiagnosed, I would say probably at least 50% and more like 75% of the time. So if you, and this goes for, I mean, if you think that a control board is bad, think again, you're almost, especially if you're, you're a new tech, you're gonna be wrong most of the time. So I learned this because the company I started at would send me sometimes after guys, they'd say, replace this board. I replaced the board, the system still doesn't work. So I also kind of, I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I had a couple times where I also misdiagnosed a board and then after going back and replacing boards that I was told to replace and replacing a couple of my own boards. And then, I mean, you eat that time on your own. You're, you're like, you're like, hey man, I just wasted fucking half a day going and getting this board. And now I like the system still isn't working. The homeowner's breathing down your neck and you're just like, what, what is going on here? So if you think a board is bad, most of the time you're wrong. Now, the way that you confirm a board is bad is if everything is working on the system, you have continuity everywhere, you have power everywhere, and it's getting a call and it's not letting power through it, then you have a bad board. So you have to eliminate every other possible thing to confirm that your board is bad. And most of the time, guys don't do that. Most of the time, there's something else happening and the board is actually okay and they just diagnosed it as fail. So uh, that's my spiel on boards. Don't just jump to that conclusion. If you jump to that conclusion, quadruple check. But if you have a bad board and you restart the system, lots of the time it'll start working again for another day or two and so then you're gonna come back. So that's why I wanna just reemphasize, don't kill power immediately. And yeah, if you do see charring on the board, like excessively, not like a little bit, like all boards have a little bit of like yellowing and ch like they'll have little burn marks here and there. Lots of the time you get a board from the factory and it'll have the same marks on it. So do not just assume that that means you have a bad board either, but if it has like a very big burn mark, that's gonna be a problem. Like a, that means it shorted somewhere. But um, yeah, so that's really basic troubleshooting. If people like this kind of video, then let me know and I'll make more of them. If people don't like them, uh, give me some dislikes and then uh, we won't do any more uh, basic troubleshooting stuff. So cool, like and subscribe. You, you.